Well, everyone, welcome to Valor Conversations. This is the wrap up to our series, which has been Brigade Tune Up, gearing up our units for the uh, upcoming ministry year. And it's hard to believe it's coming quick. Summer's winding down. We, uh, we understand that the sun's going down earlier. I look outside and it's kind of getting discouraging. But as that's taking place, there are men and boys and leaders that are waiting in the wings for us to get together once again and kick off our ministry years. And it's going to be a neat opportunity. I'm excited about uh, tonight's format. We have a number of returning guests from the previous uh, series that we have looked at, uh, Brigade Tune Up, on the audio side of things. And I'd like to take a few moments to introduce our panelists tonight. Um, Coit Morrison and David Taylor Jr. Uh, were interviewed earlier uh, with regards to scheduling and the importance of calendar. Uh, had the opportunity to have Alex Mull on with Mark Fiscus. Mark not able to join tonight, uh, but Alex is here representing the, the theme and the the topic of re relational development. Jim Zadrowski is uh, here to talk about um, more that record keeping and the importance of how that has played a role in his ministry. And Joel Fiscus is, is also on hand to discuss the unit advocate initiative that is uh, starting with regard to the partnership um, with the uh, alumni association. So it's a neat opportunity. So excited to have you all on board. Uh, the format for tonight is we're going to have some pre-planned questions uh, that I've uh, put out there. Our panelists know uh, what some of those questions are, but I'm going to ask you guys individually as we go through um, the different questions for the first 15 minutes or so. Uh, also going to ask the um, guests to share um, follow-up thoughts, um, follow-up from their specific areas of interest from when I did the interview with them um, a few weeks ago, or in some cases, a couple months ago. And then at around halfway through this broadcast, we're going to take questions from you, uh, the audience. Those of you who want to have questions that uh, can be answered, please feel free to um, go ahead and, and write those down in the, in the chat room at any point. And, um, and or if we have time to ask them live, uh, we will certainly um, welcome that as well. So that's the format for tonight. Uh, we want to be done at the top of the hour at nine o'clock Eastern um, or whatever time is your time. But we're, we want to take this hour to really hone in and focus in on what it means to run an effective unit and to uh, grow in that reality. So um, let's talk to our panelists. And with regard to this, the context of the upcoming ministry year, uh, the first question I have uh, for you guys is where are each of you at in terms of the planning and the kicking off of your ministry year thus far? And if uh, Coit and David, um, if you want to get us started with your response to that, uh, why don't you do so? And, and then Alex, you'll be on deck, Jim Zodrowski and and we'll go from there. So again, where are each of you at in terms of planning and kicking off your ministry year at this point in time? Coit and David, why don't you take it away? Well, we ended our battalion year uh, in May, and we don't start again until uh, day, uh, Wednesday after Labor Day. But all during the summer is when uh, we meet with the leadership team, and we do that every other week. We, in fact, we have another LTM tomorrow. It'd be our last one before our leaders retreat. And so we have basically uh, come up with our, our plan and we are hashing it over. In fact, during leaders retreat, we'll look at it again and just see if there's anything we have to adjust. Look at it through different lenses of, of worship and discipleship and different kind of games and different kind of trips and all. So we have been rehearsing this all summer and we're now uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And uh, Dave's been doing it from up in Kentucky. So I'll let him fill in. Yeah, yeah, so I do everything remote since I don't live in South Carolina anymore, but um, the guys have also been working on getting their squad lessons and Bible studies done uh, for the year. We're already, two lessons finishing up here this week um, and, uh, you know, ready to go for, for that first weekend in September. It's been really great to just watch them uh, dive into the word and, and get those ready ahead of time. 
Excellent. Yeah, you guys will be piggybacking off of one another because you both run in the same unit. However, it's just a little bit of a different uh, situation where you're using technology to your advantage, which is is great. And I'm sure we'll cover that and get into that a little bit more. So, Alex, uh, on to you. Let's talk about uh, your perspective of where are you individually at in terms of planning and kicking off your ministry year, Alex Mall. Thank you. First of all, thank you for having us, Jay. Um, so we've been uh, we've been meeting throughout the summer. So we typically do one event uh, per month. Um, so we actually our first event was uh, tied to Joel's uh, mentoring in a box that we uh, that that we helped out with. Um, we had a pool party in uh, in July and uh, just last week we uh, did skeet shooting as a unit. So we've been uh, we, we've been kind of engaging with the guys throughout the summer, although not all the at a slower pace than than during the year. Um, we're going to actually be meeting uh, for our LTM uh, this coming weekend, and we'll figure out uh, the plan for uh, really up till December um, in terms of who's going to be doing what, what units we're going to, uh, going to be doing and such. So um, we're excited. Um, our, our, uh, our junior leaders are really, uh, are really excited. And um, we have, uh, we, we have about four guys now who have had, uh, had a couple years of leadership experience. So we're really excited to see this uh, start to take off. Excellent. That's great. Uh, good to hear that you guys have been able to meet throughout the summer and continue the uh, the participation, the planning uh, for what is going to be a more intensive fall season for you guys. So Jim Sodrowski, why don't you fill us in a little bit where you're at at this point in terms of planning and kicking off your ministry year? Uh, we have things pretty much coming together. We've been meeting with the junior staff more than the adult leaders pretty much every week or every other week over the summer. To discuss the upcoming years. We've had a couple of activities for the boys themselves to keep them plugged in. And otherwise now it's putting things together to start in September. So yeah, we're on track and it's coming together. It'll be a crunch, but it'll be nice, hopefully not having to deal with COVID. Right. And again, many different states that are represented here, if not even a Canadian contingent that may tune in or watch this later. Um, and certainly COVID has been a challenge for each one of us in different ministry contexts, leadership contexts. And uh, Jim comes at it from the perspective of uh, New York state rules and, and whatnot. And it's it's nice to see that there has been uh, some progress being made towards um, more uniformity across uh, the different state uh, regulations and things that had already been in place. My next question to you guys, and we'll go in the same order, Coit, David, Alex, Jim, um, what adjustments are you making in your ministry approach for how last year ended versus this new intensive year? And again, I, I understand that you have been meeting, a couple of you have been meeting this summer with some of your guys uh, or some of your leaders. So again, answer it from the perspective of your own ministry context. Uh, what adjustments are you making in your ministry approach for how last year ended? Um, or slow down into the summer versus this, this new year coming up. And Coit, why don't you get us started? Well, like I said, all, all summer long, we've been uh, discussing things. And by the time we start the year, we will have the whole year planned out. Uh, we have, we use uh, MS team. So not only when we meet in person, uh, we, we also meet collaboratively through teams and are always discussing things. So uh, there's always a chance that something's going to be changed, but we, our philosophy is it's better to make a plan. And then if you've got something you really want to do, it's a whole lot easier to change that plan than to constantly be coming up with things. But one of the things we do is we look at the past year and there might be a certain game that they don't think we should play anymore or how we do things. So probably one of the biggest adjustments we did this year was we decided not to do a pre camp uh, We thought that it was really good last year, but it took a lot of our year. So uh, that was, uh, so we're, we're always evaluating and adjusting from year to year. And not only that, but we have um, uh, huddles. After the meeting, we will meet on teams that night on a huddle for about 15 minutes. And while it's still fresh, is there anything that we need to put on the agenda for LTM? 
hmm. or, or if it's something that we we've got to discuss if we have a problem or thing. So we're we are always, according to your question, we are always in that mode. Uh, always uh, evaluating. Right. Okay. And then awesome. Dave Dave made some significant changes this year too. I'll let him say that. Oh yeah, Dave, share it, man. <laughs> Spill the beans. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. Uh, so we do these Bible studies with the non-coms to, to get their squad lessons prepared. And we did make some significant changes this year. We bought all of our uh, non-coms a basic uh, Logos Bible software library. Um, oh. And we've got a workflow built for them to where they're really just digging deep into passages. And then uh, we changed the way we do their squad formats. Um, so uh, they're submitting these lesson plans to me and we even tweaked those just the last week again because it wasn't working with the way the bible software works uh so we're constantly evaluating that but yeah using using logos as our primary driver for those studies has been a huge adjustment this year but the guys seem to really be uh, responding to it and really digging deeper in their studies awesome alex let's go to you uh talk about some of the adjustments that you are making uh that you and your team are making from last year how things ended and i know again i know that you've been meeting this summer but how what adjustments are you making um even through the summer as you move into this new calendar year or this new school year ministry year i think one of the the biggest um adjustments we're making is we're now starting to get some non-coms that have a couple of years experience and really starting to slide into that sweet spot with brigade where the non-coms really are are leading the the other guys um and so you know that's it's been something we've been working on building up over the last couple of years but i think we are finally at that place where uh you know our non-coms can uh, can start to uh take on those responsibilities um so that's exciting for us to see i mean it's it, it's we i certainly enjoy doing it but i even enjoy more seeing the the non-coms uh really own the program and what goes on on a on a on a weekly basis. Awesome, very cool, Jim. How about you? Uh, what adjustments are you guys making from last year to this year? Uh, I know you've shared with me a little bit offline uh, some of the adjustments, which I'm not going to share. Uh, but love to hear you what you have to say uh, to everyone. Our biggest changes are since the COVID restrictions started in New York. I've had pretty much a complete turnover in leadership. And I know with the COVID restrictions we had in place, especially at my church, the leaders haven't been trained up the way they would have been prior to COVID. Mm. So the big thing that we have going into this year is we're trying to get back to the basics, you know, with everything, with the training. This is why we do games this way. This is how you tell a story. This is the purpose of post time. This is the purpose of squad time. You know, so we're starting with the basics with stockade. And as I shared with you earlier with our battalion, going into a rebuilding mode so that's the biggest thing is just get back to the basics and start rebuilding a foundation because we've got a lot of guys and i want to do it well and we have to do it right right do it with excellence uh, yeah i think you're on mute that's right thank you um where we get back into the basics and get into the weeds sort of so to speak, as we develop and grow uh, things once again from, from that level. So the last question I have in this general forum before we get into more specifics from you guys, um, I want to I wanna ask you this, what sort of initial team building and connection plans do you have with your leaders for this new year? And some of you have already answered that. So if you if you kind of need to pass this or or shape it a little bit more to your ministry context, please feel free to do so. But Coit, let's begin with you again. What what sort of initial team building are you are you doing? You you shared with it offline uh, about a retreat coming up. Um, but what other connection plans do you have with your leaders for this new year? Well, the retreat is a big one. It's and we traditionally have always had a retreat, but in the earlier uh, days, they were very intensive. I wouldn't call it a retreat. They were pretty grueling and making a lot of decisions. We have, uh, like I said, uh, did our, all our planning during the summer. So this retreat is just for the fellowship. We, we, we get a, we've got an Airbnb cabin up on the, the Limbo Gorge. We're going to do some hiking. We'll 
play some games. We'll we'll have some we have some team building exercises, you know, with buckets of water over your feet and trying to tie your laces and that kind of stuff. Uh, the guys will be doing the cooking though, uh, so it give them opportunity to try different different menus. So they'll they'll take turns leading the cooking that that night. Uh, you know, the different nights in uh, breakfast and. Uh, the whole idea is just to get together for the fellowship of the, the brotherhood and to, yeah, we'll practice a lineup for, you know, we got a, a new non-com in there. So he really doesn't, he knows the lineups, but he doesn't. And so we'll do those kinds of things. We'll do a quick review and all, but we'll spend some time in prayer. Uh, but, but that's it. And then we do have other things throughout the year that we focus just on the junior leaders. We have a trip in February over President's Day weekend, which is a special trip. Uh, so we, we do special things with them. David, why don't you share a little bit about your involvement? I know it's the same unit. I understand that uh, reality, but you're from afar. So mm -hmm. what sort of involvement do you have from your context of this team building and connection plans with these uh, leaders in your new ministry year? Sure. So, um, yeah, it, it definitely does look different from my end. Um, I've not been able to go on the leadership retreat and trips the last couple of years just due to family circumstances. But um, I meet with the guys regularly on, on teams. Uh, we cut up just it's not all business all the time. We just have fun. Uh, we'll play games online together uh, just so I keep that relationship with them. And uh, it really is good. The times when I, I do get to see them in person, it's like I'm not not there. Um, it's, it's, it's really good. Just for context, how, how, how far does it take you or how long does it take you to get home if you do show up in person for an event? Uh, six and a half to seven and a half hours. Wow. That's huge. That's huge. Um, Alex. Uh, again, what sort of initial team building connection plans do you have with your leaders in the new ministry year thus far? So we typically have a kickoff event um, over the last couple of years. Uh, Mark has graciously hosted us to uh, fish in his pond and you know have some food and really get some time to uh, really get some time to get them, get to uh, know each other, find out what folks have been up to over the break and and things like that, and you know. Folks who haven't caught fish have uh, typically dominated that event, so it's uh, it, it's been a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool way to get everything started. Awesome. And Jim, how about you? Uh, you mentioned already some some of uh, what you're doing with meeting with your junior leaders. What are some other initial team building and connection plans that you have with your leaders for this new ministry year? Uh, the only thing we have coming up is where we'll get the junior staff. There's going to be about ten of them this year with the adult leaders we're going to have just a get together barbecue type thing you know and at that point then we'll start hashing out more specific plans for all of them and start the training excellent excellent well and again i i, I welcome everyone to go ahead and type your questions in the chat we will get to those uh at the 8 30 mark um for those of you who had the chance and the opportunity to hear some of the previous podcasts, again, uh, Coit and David Taylor, uh, Coit Morrison and David Taylor Jr. Uh, joined me for a discussion on the calendar uh, and the nature of scheduling and the development of that. Alex joined me with regard to relational development. Jim uh, talked to me about the importance of record keeping. And this is going to be their opportunity to talk about um, any follow-up thoughts that they have uh, with regard to what they've already included in the initial episode, uh, for the sake of context, things change, right? It's been a, it's been almost two months since I interviewed a couple of you, and it's been only a couple of weeks for for uh, the rest of you. So the two questions I have for you, and Koi, we'll we'll get started with you. Um, how did you end up becoming passionate and focused about your specific area of interest in the first place? And number two, since the initial podcast, is there anything else that you want to add? It's kind of an open-ended question um, that you didn't get to say in the initial recording. And we'll spend the next 10 minutes or so talking about this before we get into the specific questions uh, from the, the rest of the audience. So, um, Koi, why don't you get us started? Well, I guess how I got passionate for calendars and schedules uh, goes back a long ways. Uh, a lot of people think of a schedule as, as refining and almost like a shackle. 
but I see a schedule and the planning and the calendar as free, freedom. Uh, when we spend the summer planning the year, uh, then we're free to focus on people and relationships. We're, we're free to, you know, we're still following the plan. We're still doing the plan, but we're free to change the plan. And uh, because we have looked at the plan through many different lenses, making sure we're not staying on a certain soapbox or uh, we have the full um, realm of discipleship included in there. Since we've spent the time doing that, then we can trust our plan to be to cover really a lot of bases there. And so um, as to what I would say that I haven't said already, well, I tend to talk too much anyway, so I, I can't think of anything. Uh, <laughs> but it really is a good collaborative uh, part of our plan. And it's also a way that when the guys are making a, a commitment, they know exactly what they're committing to. They, they've been part of this because it has been collaborative. It's not like something that we have devised in the back room and and just given to them say this is what we're going to do uh but no they've hashed through it and sometimes it, you got to drag it out of them and i say we're not going to move forward until you get some ideas out here but um but once they do then it there's an ownership there there's a, a collaborative effort there is we really are a team and it's not the senior leaders lording over but we're doing it together as brothers in christ and 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 there, there's freedom in that awesome david same thing uh with regard to the area of interest how did you get passionate about it and is there anything else you would like to add since we initially did the the recording a couple months back yeah i'm not i'm not sure if there is anything uh i would add i do i do just echo what what coit just said though the the freedom of just not having the stress of what are we doing today? We mm -hmm. already know what we're doing today. And, and like Coit said, you know, getting to focus on people, getting to focus on not just the senior leaders focusing on the non-coms, but watching the non-coms being able to really focus on the guys in their squad and build those relationships. Um, and then being able to talk to them about how to build relationships as opposed to, you know, what's the game tonight? Or, you know, where are we going on the trip next month? Or what are the logistics of that trip next month? It, it really is just becomes all about people at that point when you've planned that far ahead. Awesome. Alex, uh, again, same set of questions. How did you end up becoming so passionate about, uh, about relational development in the first place? And since the initial podcast, since we talked, uh, is there any additional advice? Kind of, again, an open-ended question. Anything that you would like to add that we didn't cover in our initial recording? I think what really has helped me and... Oh, there you go. I'm not only. Um, I think what's really helped me is, is uh, from a relational perspective, um, you know, I've kind of been there where, you know, there's a large room and, you know, I kind of feel, you know, a little, a, a, a little by myself. And um, it's, you know, it, it takes some, it takes some, you know, time to maybe come out of your shell and really start to interact with folks. And, um, you know, I, I, I really, tried to impress upon um, my non-coms and, and folks who have been there for a while, you know, there, there are people, they may be there, um, they may be interacting, but, you know, they may be, they, they, you know, they may not be all that involved and, you know, really getting to know someone, really getting to understand, you know, where, where, where they are in life, um, you know, where they are in school, what's going well, what's not, um, you know that really that really shows a lot of interest in someone, um, and I think really helps that person come out of their shell uh, and you know want to participate. Um, you know I've I, I've seen a significant change in some folks who were were, were newer um, at the beginning of our last year to to now, um, where you know they're they're involved and they want to participate and and things. Um, so that that's what really excites me about being about having the the ability to provide that environment to be to have more relational re relationships awesome jim same thing 
you're passionate about record keeping, you're in the weeds uh, to get to know these boys that come to your uh, to to your unit. Um, when did you really become passionate about it? Maybe maybe you're, it's just because something you had to do. Uh, and any other open ended advice that you have since we originally talked a couple couple months ago, a month and a half ago. Well, I started seeing the importance of the record keeping. Uh, during my years as a brigade leader, I've worked with two different brigade units that I ended up taking over. And when I took them over, they had no records. They didn't have phone lists. They didn't have any financial records. They didn't have contact lists. They didn't have information on the boys. So part of it is that, that when I leave as a brigade leader one day, and one day I will, I hope it's not anytime soon, that whoever takes my place, they'll have all the information. They'll know mm -hmm. the boys, they'll know the leaders, they'll know the budgets. All that'll make their life easier to build a successful ministry. Hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's the biggest reason why. And the second thing is I'm passionate about it, you know, not so much so that I know the details for the group, but with so many of our guys from outside of the church, by keeping the records, I know who we have in our groups. You know, I can tailor the advertising. I know who to direct it to, what's working, what's not working. It all works hand in hand with everything we have structured. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and some of these things are, are things that, uh, as you mentioned, um, things that we wanted ourselves when we first came into it and want to leave that legacy and pass it on uh, with excellence. So now is our question and answer time. And there are a lot of questions already in there, a few from a, a fellow field staff member, David, uh, and he has the first question that I'm going to ask you guys. And um, maybe I'll just call on you if it's related to the subject matter, or if you want to just jump in, that's fine too. Um, why do you do weekly huddle on video calls instead of in person right after the program ends? Uh, when you do uh, when do you do that? Because by the time he gets home, it's at 1030 at night and he's exhausted. I'm, I'm assuming that's what he means by that. So, um, David, you're on the video. So why don't you answer that? And Coit, if you want to jump in with anything that, that complements that, go ahead. But David, why don't you take that one away first? Uh, yeah, well, part, part of the reason is so I can join. <laughs> um, but uh, also, um, and Coit can, can respond further, but what we have found is instead of having a meeting at the end of the night, actually there in person, if we do it uh, at home, everybody has time to go home, kind of get settled in a little bit, get a bite to eat if they've not already had dinner. Um, and we usually meet up about an hour after brigade ends. Um, and we it allows us to have the freedom of just being in the comfort of our own home. Parents don't have to wait on us. Uh, and we can talk and it doesn't matter. We're not bound by time, although we try to keep it relatively short. But if a, you know, if a serious discussion starts happening, um, we have the freedom to keep that going. And then the rest of us who don't want to leave, we just keep fellowshipping after the huddle. Awesome. Coy, right. any other response to that? Go ahead. Yeah, there, there's several factors. I mean, personally, I would like to have a meeting afterwards in person, but it, it's not. Uh, it just doesn't work for several reasons. One is we try to end the meeting right at 8.30, meaning that if some if a parent is there, I don't want them to get used to the idea that they have to be there 10, 15 minutes before they can leave because then they'll be 10, 15 minutes. So we try to end right on time. Uh, but there's many a times where they, one of the non-coms needed to, to stop and talk with someone or, yeah. or, you know, or someone had to leave early. And so just to be able to wait till everyone can do it, it just doesn't happen. And so, yeah, the guys get to go home and uh, grab something real quick to eat, and even eat it online with us. And we say be there by nine o'clock, but they're usually there. I said, if everyone shows up by, you know, we'll start whenever everyone's there, but uh, which it's usually about 845. So it's not really too late and it's still fresh in, in their mind. And there's usually, you know, sometimes there's nothing to this, this to discuss, but sometimes there is, and it just leaves the door open and they all like to, I, I want to go to bed. So I always find, I always say good night. And I, 
I don't know. Dave will have to tell you, but some of them might believe they're probably in there for another half hour, hour. I don't know, but uh, sometimes two or three. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How about that? Um, next question uh, is, is this, and this is from, I believe, Dennis. Um, does anyone use the summer to connect with the church leadership, local men's ministry leadership in some capacity? Uh, and if one of you would like to chime in on that one, um, let's, uh, Jim, why don't you take that one away first? Um, yeah, I meet with the, usually we're in, a, in the middle of a pastoral change. So this year is a little different, but <laughs> during the summer, yes, I meet with the pastoral staff, the senior pastor, you know, pretty regular, uh, just to evaluate the year and set things up for the coming year. Because our now former pastor, he was pretty plugged in and involved with the group. You know, okay. So, yeah, I think that's important. And when we, the new pastor, whenever he arrives in September, you know, hopefully it'll be the same thing. Awesome. Uh, and let's. Let's send it over to Alex, too. Uh, I don't know why I keep getting muted here, but uh, Alex, why don't you. Um, and answer that too. Do you use the summer to connect with uh, your church leadership, uh, to connect with your own men's ministry uh, leadership at your church? We do uh, partner in some events with with our men's ministry. Um, there's uh, bicycling and other things that 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 go on where we retreat. So um, we do uh, we we do participate in those events over the summer. Gen generally, the summer is a little bit more of a more of a downtime for, for some of those. Um, so, you know, we, we, we do some, but I don't know that it's, uh, it, it's an every, uh, an every week occurrence type thing. Okay. Um, this one's directed specifically to Alex and let me, let me, uh, just share it right in the chat. Uh, what did you do, uh, regarding non-com leadership prior to this year when your non-coms finally can own the program more independently? So I'll just uh, ju just for a point of clarity. Um, so we have non-coms and they do run they, they they do participate and you know run the the, de the weekly meetings. Um, I, I think what I was trying to refer to is is that um, as we a as we've been planning for what are we going to do for the first half of the second half of the year, that's mostly fallen on um, us as adult leaders. Um, we are we, we where we're seeing that turn is that now our non-coms. Are getting involved in that and are starting to, um, you know, provide their input in terms of, you know, what units do we want to do? What what do they think, you know, folks uh, that they lead would be interested in, um, and and events and such. So, um, you know, from a from a meeting perspective, you know, we have a sergeant and 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 corporals and such. But now in the planning aspect, they're really starting to uh, starting to own that as a, 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 as a program. Awesome. Coit and David, how many non-coms do you have and how would you describe them? Coit, you're you are muted. I will ask to unmute you, but I think you have to control that from your end. Uh right now we have four, no, yeah, four non-coms. Uh five. No, we can five. Pick another five non-coms. Uh three of them are corporals. One is a uh, Lance Corporal. One is what we call a specialist. He has no command function. He's a little, uh, he's a, a little, uh, what's that term? Autistic. So, but he really needs to be on our team. And so he handles record keeping and, and things like that. And then we do have one other uh, that uh, one of our corporals is targeting uh, and I believe he will probably be on the leadership team halfway through the year. Awesome. Okay, Jim, this one's for you. Uh, I know the answer to this, <laughs> uh, but it's worth sharing. And I know, I know the answer to this personally too, because of what we talked about on the podcast. Um, but the person that asks this question also knows the answer to this. Uh, share with all of us how many weeks pass by uh, with a boy or young man not attending. Um, do you send the, him a postcard uh, telling him that you've missed him? Uh, talk about the dynamic involved with that. Yes. If a boy misses two weeks in a row, they get a postcard in the mail. Uh, if they miss three weeks in a row, they get another note and the parents are followed up on to see if they need a ride or something's changed 
where they're unable to come. Uh, same thing if a boy visits, they get a handwritten postcard as well, and the parents get a letter. The boys get postcards, one, because they're easy to do. I have them up at church, and we pull it out, and we write it and mail it that night. That's awesome. uh, and two, since so many of the boys are from outside of the church, outside of any church, the parents can see what their kid's getting in the mail, hmm. as opposed to a sealed envelope. The postcard, they could flip it over, and they see what it is. It's non-threatening, and that keeps boys more involved. You know, the percentages of a boy missing two, three weeks in a row, him returning drops every extra week that he, that he misses. Hmm. And I don't like losing boys. Well, and let's be honest too. It's also cheaper, right? Yes. <laughs> it is cheaper for a postcard as opposed to a, a standard letter. Uh, another question that has come up, what are some of the ways uh, you see the guys um, now freed from weekly planning to focus on their guys? Alex, let's talk about that from your end of things. What are some ways you see the guys now freed from weekly planning to focus on their guys? I'm not quite sure I get the context there. Uh, yeah. Can I just tell you? Go ahead, David. Yeah, I, I think it was, uh, yeah, you you had said that um, they, I think it was you said that, no, somebody said that, that because of the planning was done out of the way, I think it might have been Coy earlier, you guys can now focus on the relationships and the guys rather than on planning. And I'm wondering, what is that focus on relationship? And focusing on your guys, what do you see that looking like on the ground? Uh, well, I, a couple of ways. I mean, there's many ways, but uh, one way is when you're going on a trip and you talk with the leadership, instead of having all the guys sit with their buds, that they actually proactively decide who they're going to sit with and what are three questions that they're going to try to find out about them and three things that they want to share. So they're being proactive on, uh, you know, doing something that they wouldn't naturally do, you know, and I, and I understand that. I, I would want to sit with my best friends too, but uh, so you can focus on that or, or in the leadership team meeting, instead of deciding uh, what are we going to do next week, we usually go down the list of the guys in each squad and what is your goal for them? The, you know, salvation here, or maybe this is the next non-com I want to train, or this person has uh, some troubles in life and what can we do to, to for that? And, and so talking about, and how are you going to find out about some? So you're, instead of the logistics of the meeting coming up, we can talk about logistics of how do you, uh, build relationship. It's good. Another question that that has popped up, and David has asked this too. Do you have a template for what you cover each week in your huddles? Uh, what questions do you ask? What topics do you cover? Uh, let's kind of go around the horn here. And, and um, Jim, why don't you get us started with that? Uh, do you have a template for for your huddles? And what questions or topics do you cover? No, we don't have any type of templates. I have materials I've used in the past. It all depends on the non-coms, on, on the teens. Okay. You know, uh, this year, the majority of them are, they're very young spiritually. So, it, you know, like I said earlier, a lot of this is just back to the basics. Fair enough. Um, Alex, how about you? We don't have a template either. Um, it, it's basically, we we look at, how did what what happened that evening, and you know how did how did things go? How how might we how might we do things differently if uh, if there if the opportunity uh, arises? Okay, David. Um, Coy Coy can speak better to this uh, with with the Bible study templates. When we have those huddles, I ask them, you know, what did we get from the last study? Were there any questions you had? We talk about what's the upcoming study. Uh, Coit does have a, a template that he kind of uses when we're doing the Wednesday night huddles, though. Okay. Yeah, and, and it's it's not anything written down what they're looking at, but it's basically all the parts of the meeting. Was there something about the game? Was there something about the action time? Was there something about council ring? Or was there some uh, relationship that we had a problem? Was there, you know, so there's a list of things and they know that. And they, we don't go through and 
discuss every one of them, but they, they know if there's any of the major part of the meeting or relationship that needs to be discussed. And just to remind you, we don't always, in fact, most of the time we don't discuss it there at the huddle, but it will be on the agenda for uh, LTM, which we have LTM every every uh, month, or it was it may be something that I put because we do collaborate on MS Teams and we have posts and things of different natures that we collaborate through. So, but somewhere along the line, we'll deal with it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, a couple more questions, and then we'll we'll uh, have I have some announcements with regard to CSB that I think are certainly worth covering here. Um, this is for everyone, not just panelists, but for those who create your own missions. Have you written this all down, and can you share with the rest of us in Brigade Leader? Um, that is a, a generic question for everyone. Um, brigade leader is something that we are going to be leaning into more, especially once the ministry year starts. And I want to encourage you to um, find your way there if you haven't found your way there as of yet. Um, so write down some of those things. Uh, uh, David, you mentioned in the chat, uh, answering to Scott, uh, you have some basic content that you can share with topics such as uh, basic theology, evangelism, world religions. Do you want to expound on that at all by chance? Uh, yeah, sure. So for, for a long time, we've been kind of writing our own uh, mission guides for a while. And one of the things we try to do each year is make sure that one is spiritually focused. Um, and, and since that's just kind of my background with my degree, I usually get picked for that one. Um, so I, I've written one on basic theology, just going through the basic tenets of the faith. I've written one on world religions and then also one on, on evangelism. And I think this year we're doing apologetics this year, right, Coit? Right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. David, um, so much to talk about. <laughs> so much good information that's flowing from this. Um, Many times we ask each non-com uh, for their meetings this or for their huddles. This is what Scott has chimed in and said. Um, many times we ask each non-com what went right about tonight and what can we do better? Good questions to ultimately ask. Are there any other questions that haven't been shared in the chat uh, in the chat feature of this that you might like to ask? I'm going to simply offer that to you. Um, in these next two minutes uh, before we move on with our, our our next subject matter. Would anybody like to ask the panel any discussion questions that you might have? No? Once, twice, three times? Okay, hey, that's all I, right. I, I, I do. Go ahead, David. I didn't want to hog. It looked like Bob Nance was going to answer too. I was just going to say, Bob, Bob, you wanted to say, you looked confused. He was muted. You're muted, my friend. He's, he's unmuted, but we can't hear him. His mic's not working. If you want to type it in the chat room, Bob. um, Or you can mime it. (laughs) David's uh, muted. That's I was just laughing at what you said. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll take a moment. If Bob wants to write that in the chat portion, just go ahead and click chat um, at the bottom of the screen, and you can you can write it in there, Dave, Bob, and go from there. Uh, Dave, do you have any other additional questions you want to ask? Well, it was more a, co- a comment, uh, just that um, I listened to the uh, planning podcast that David and Coit did, and... Um, reached out to David in response to that and asked him if he would do a, um, if he would be willing to get interviewed on how they s- walk through the, how they structure um, putting their squad times together at the Bible studies. He'd that be so helpful. I would love to glean from that. And then as we were talking, their non-com sounds so similar to ours. I want to get a video call sometime between the the two of them to, uh, to talk about um, what they love about their particular um, brigade unit and what they think they do really well so we can be kind of cross-pollinating so thank you for making this possible awesome well uh, a couple of dates that i want to pass along to everyone that is 
a part of this uh, broadcast that is important for the new ministry year. Uh, next week, Tuesday night at August 30th, it's the Alumni Council Ring that starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, um, for those of you that are interested in that. And then just a couple short weeks from now, in September, September 8th, we have the Continental Kickoff. And this is an event as a result of COVID, believe it or not. And we have been able to continue um, being creative in the midst of COVID. And the Continental Kickoff has been a, a pretty good success story, I think, that has come out of um our dealings with uh, the different restrictions that have been in place. Stockade um, gets started off at 7 p.m. Eastern time with the first episode, um, 7 p.m. Eastern time, again, on the East Coast. That's mainly framed for them. Battalion is at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then there's a second Stockade episode that is going to be taking place at 9 p.m. Eastern time, specifically for those that are out west okay so there's uh some neat movement there um and again the alumni council ring as keith is chiming in is still in, involved in brigade as well as those who are no longer are so if you want to be part of that as well we certainly welcome that um and as an aside to our next series for uh valor conversations is going to be culture changing uh culture changers what it means to be involved with culture that's ever present, ever changing. And we are excited about that next series. It's going to start uh, the first week in September with the audio podcasts every Friday at noon. Those will be launched. And then we will have another Valor Conversations live roundtable discussion on Tuesday, November 15th at 8 p.m. But um, I wanted to bring in uh, Joel uh, to talk about um, the Unit Advocate Initiative. Joel has experience, as you all know, being a chairman, being a field staff coordinator, vice president um, with Christian Service Brigade. And, and Joel, I wanted to give you a few moments to answer these questions. How do you see this initiative assisting with the mission of Brigade? And what other thoughts might you have with regard to the Unit Advocate and uh, any uh, other additional things that you want to share post podcast that I had the chance to interview you with. Sure. I think one of the main uh, amazing things I have about my position is that I get to hear testimonies of men who were in brigade and oftentimes were even brigade leaders at some time earlier uh, in their adulthood. And a lot of these men are now in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, and sometimes even in their 80s. And these men still have a lot to offer, a lot of times either because of where they've now moved, uh, they are not able to be part of a local unit, or they're just not physically able to be involved in a, a weekly unit, but they're still passionate about brigade, they still bleed green, they still have a lot to offer. And they love to pray for a local unit. Even for those units that are strong, every one of us would love to have somebody that would regularly check in on us and say, hey, give me the names of all of the boys in your unit so that I can pray for them, just their first names. And if there's a specific request for some of them, and also the leaders, uh, give give me give me their names and let me know how I can pray for them. And if I'm close enough, uh, I might come and do a story offer to do a story circle or a council ring, or I can do a uh, council ring like David Taylor does, do it virtually. And so, a a unit advocate. Uh, there's been some question: How is a unit advocate different than a regional director? Well, first of all. A lot of the men who are going to be unit advocates that have signed up so far are men who are not familiar with our most recent resources, and they don't need to be. They just know, um, I think those of you who have run brigade units a long time, someone like Coit would say the resources might have changed, but a lot of ways other than, um, you know, that were more online, it's pretty much run the way it's been run for decades in some ways. Um, and so uh, a lot of these men know how to 
run a successful or, or, or an effective ministry. And they're a great listening ear. They can uh, they can come alongside the units. So we're our goal is to have a unit advocate for every unit. And we've got a, a decent start. We still have a ways to go. And right now it's actually one of the it's actually the first joint effort between our national office and field staff in collaboration with our alumni association team to build the alumni uh, to, to build the unit advocate team and these men uh, are not going to be this isn't just an initiative till we get enough um, field staff again this is an initiative that we plan to continue forward with and so a great way to find out more about this would be to listen to that the podcast where Jay has interviewed Ed Babcock, one of the team members on the alumni team, and myself. Awesome. Thank you, Joel. Yeah, and it's a, a neat initiative uh, that we are uh, partnering with the Alumni Association, as you covered, and it's going to be an, an, a neat opportunity to continue to have more involvement, more collaboration, and whatnot. Uh, Scott, let me turn it over to you. I know you wanted to share some thoughts uh, tonight with regard to the, the new ministry year, and um, the floor is yours, my friend. Well, it's a little bit less about the, the new ministry year and a little bit more about our future. But I'm, I'm Jay, I'm excited about this next series of podcasts culminating with another Valor Conversations like this, because we know um, those of us working with boys and young men, uh, especially for parents, the the world is winning for you know in in the hearts and minds of a, a biblical manhood uh, of what it looks like and we want we want to be able to uh, get you passionate about the top you know we've got many topics coming up in this next series to to just continue to um spotlight what you're doing is so critically important for our next generation of godly men but i just as i shared i want to share a little bit about our future um Many of you know, you know, the past 18 months uh, has been a time probably like no other in our 85 year history. Uh, decisions were made and coupled with a, a major sense of urgency uh, to move, really rush things along have unfortunately hurt our ministry of Christian Service Brigade. Um, I, I shared on a, a council ring that uh, these past 18 months, um, we've learned a lot. Uh, there's been some silver lining, but we're not ever going to run from it because of, of the things that we can learn. Um, just a couple things that did hurt. We lost two thirds of our field staff and one third of our church units. But those of us that are left on staff are excited about what God has in store for us. Yeah. But we're not, we, we understand that our heads are not in the sand and we have certain realities uh, moving forward. You know, there's a saying out there, well, God will provide. I fully believe that. We've seen that time and again. There, you know, uh, five years ago, there, there was a summer that we had, and we, we just didn't know how we were going to make payroll a, cu a couple of the times, and God always provided. I believe that. But yet, we need to do our part, not just let, you know, God sit back and say, okay, let's, uh, you know, the things are going to come to us. When I worked at an insurance company in downtown Buffalo, there was a, uh, a picture on my floor that still resonates with me today. It mm -hmm. says, it said, don't wait for your ship to come in, swim out to it. <laughs> and so to see this ministry once thrive again, it's going to take resources, both human and financial. Now, as we look to rebuild our foundation of Christian Service Brigade, to most, it's not a surprise that this is going to take finances the financial resources. So since taking over as donor development director, Christian Rosado has done a fantastic job in our year end campaigns, our calendar year end, as well as our fiscal year end. The last two years we did peddling for a purpose. Those campaigns have been vital to us for to cover organizational and operational expenses. But we desire to take it to the next level for projects to um, reshape our tree climbers materials and so many more, uh, we need to allow Christian and myself to focus not only on our faithful current donors, but to look to grow this base. There are a lot of administrative tasks that Christian completes with if, if we freed her up 
from those, it would allow her to pursue others to take Christian Service Brigade to where it needs to be. So therefore, we've set a goal of $100,000 to hire an administrative assistant. And this $100,000 will cover the expenses for, for this role for about three years, we're estimating. And in that time, this department will then become self-sufficient moving forward. And here's where we can, you, we can use your help. I'm asking each of you to be thinking of someone you know, a businessman, an entrepreneur, somebody you know with some means that we can reach out to. You don't have to, maybe you can plant some seeds that we want to, but we'll reach out to them to share our vision and invite them to invest and build the building godly men of today and tomorrow through their significant gift. So I'd like you to um, please email me. Let me see if I can get to this quickly here. Um, I'm trying to oh there it is all right so please Chief email me <laughs> let's see if I gotta move the right way here there we go is it backwards <laughs> no it's good no it's, all right sometimes sometimes when you have a virtual background it's mirrored but please email me the, the names and the contact information of, of these people that you may be thinking out of. And, and when you do that, please share your brigade story with us as well. We're always looking for uh, brigade stories to share uh, of impact. And email me directly at shima, S-H-A-I-M-A at csbministries.org. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Thank you, Scott. Hey, uh, let's go around the horn for a final time. Uh, Coy, final words for today. Any final thoughts, advice, uh, encouragement as we kick off the new ministry year? Coy, you're up first. You're kind of on the spot with that. Okay. Well, in the words of Joseph Coughlin, forward to the far horizon. Awesome. David Taylor, you're next. Any final thoughts, words, or, or encouragement that you would like to share? Open-ended question. Get your, get, get your kids to bed on time. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Dave. Dave told me I had to introduce her. This is our daughter, Anna Grace. We adopted her uh, in June. So awesome. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Alex, final word. Uh, go for it. I think one of the things that I would try and leave folks with is this is an opportunity for believers um, like an opportunity we have not seen before. Our culture is very confused. Folks are, you know, th th there's a lot of wondering and all that about. Um, we know what we believe. We know what's true. And we have the opportunity to share it with, with those and to really um, make Christ known in, uh, in, in, in families and in churches everywhere. So, Think about the opportunity that, that that you have in front of you. Awesome. Jim Sadrowski, final word. The final, final word. Final, Go final. Um, yeah, final whether final. your year goes smooth or you hit speed bumps, make it a great year. This is our shot to minister to the boys and teens we have in our groups this year. And that's the focus. Awesome. Well, men, I would like to close it out in prayer. Uh, my many, many thanks uh, to our panel today, uh, Coit. Uh, David, thank you. Uh, Alex, thank you. Jim, thank you for jumping in and being part of this. This was very valuable information. Joel, thanks for updating us about the Unit Advocate Initiative. And Scott, thank you uh, for talking about the future, future endeavors, future dreams, and what is uh, coming down the pipeline. But I would love to close it out in prayer. And if anybody wants to stay on for any additional questions, kind of uh, as a free-for-all, um, open-ended, uh, you're welcome to do that. I'll be the last one to sign off, but let me uh, let me close us out officially in prayer. God, thank you for tonight, and thank you for this awesome opportunity to uh, press forward, to uh, know that we have been through a, a lot over these last couple of years, particularly over the last 18 months as a ministry, and I thank you that we are coming out hopeful, uh, and our hope is not in ourselves. Our hope is in you. And may we continue to be grounded and rooted in you um, and leave a legacy for the men and boys uh, that come after us. Uh, I pray that this time would 
uh, serve as a uh, awesome time that of things that we can incorporate into our respective ministries, into our respective units, and into the the young men and boys and leaders that are that we have the opportunity to influence. Uh, Lord, would you have your way, and may you use this kickoff that's coming up uh, to your benefit uh, for your kingdom and your kingdom uh, come in a good and awesome way. We pray this in your name. Amen. November 15th is the next uh, Valor Conversations um, uh, night like this, where we will have some more roundtable discussion. That's uh, a Tuesday night, November uh, 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but until next time, God bless you guys. Thank you again. And my many thanks again to our panel for taking the time and being part of things tonight. We'll see you soon.